When President Rodrigo Ro Duterte came into power in 2016, he and his economic managers presented a 10-point social economic agenda. These focused on continuity, tax reform, competitiveness, infrastructure spending, agriculture and tourism, land ownership and security, human capital, science, technology and creative arts, social... Good day everyone, this is Johaimin B. Esmail and I'm going to present to you the Fiscal Policy 1946 to present. The impact of the war to the Philippine economy was effectively desperate. In as Manila as the capital was raised to the ground while the rest of the Philippines was relatively untouched. But the highly agriculture-based economy was disrupted. The United States may have declared the Philippine independent and as the country needed rehabilitation from the U.S., the dependency of the Philippines was an opportunity to take, in, uh, to take in advantage of by the former colonial administrator. In 1949, the economic situation was so problematic and there is a lack severe of funds in many aspects of the governance such as the education and military sectors. There is no effort were made to improve the tax collection and the United States advised the adoption of direct taxation in the administration of President Manuel Rojas declined that proposal because it didn't want to alienate its allies in Congress. Capitals for economic growth came during the time of President Elpidio Quirino through the implementation of import and exchange controls that led to import substitution development. New tax measures were also passed, including the higher corporate tax rates that increased the government revenue. The tax revenue increased twofold in 1953 compared to 1948, the year when the year when when Quirino first assumed presidency. While the succeeding presidencies of Magsaysay, Garcia, and Macapagal promised to study the tax structure in the policy of the country through the creation of the Tax Commission in 1959 by means of Republic Act Number 2211 to make way to a more robust and efficient and efficient and efficient tax collection scheme. In 1959 to 1968, Congress did not pass any tax legislation despite of the important changes in the economy and the vested interest of the Filipino businessmen in Congress would have to manifest in many instances such as the rejection of taxes of imports, taxes of imports, and the indirect collection still contributed to the three quarters of the tax revenue. Omnibus tax law in 1969 did not increase the income tax to general tax revenue. Collection of taxes remained poor and the tax structure was still problematic and much of the public funds were lost to corruption in which left the government incapable in funding projects geared towards development. Under the Marcos authoritarian regime, the tax system remained regressive in the latter part of Marcos year 1981-1985, the tax system was heavily independent or, indi or indirect taxes, or indirect taxes, which made up of 70% of total tax collection and the tax grew at an average of 15% and, ge and generate to low tax yield. Okay, what is tax effort? Okay. Tax effort is a is the ratio between the share of the actual tax collection in GDP or in the gross domestic products and the predictable taxable capacity was at 10.7%. As Corazon Aquino took the helm of the government, 
the EDSA revolution, she reformed the tax system through the 1986 tax reform program and the aim was to improve the responsiveness of the tax system and to promote equity, promote growth by withdrawing or modifying taxes and to reduce incentive to work and to produce and to and to improve the tax administration as well define me fiscal policy is guiding force that helps the government decide how much money it should spend to support the economic activity Ang fiscal policy ay isang pwersa sa paggabay na makakatulong sa pamahalaan na magpasya kung magkano ang pera na dapat gugulin o gastusin o gamitin upang suportahan ang aktibidad na pang ekonomiya. What is government revenue? Government revenue is money received by a government from taxes and non-tax sources to enable it to undertake government expenditures. Ang government revenue ay pera na natanggap ng isang gobyerno mula sa buwis at mga mapagkukunan na hindi buwis upang magsagawa ng mga paggasta ng gobyerno o yung mga expenses, expenditures ng gobyerno. What is indirect tax? Indirect tax is a tax collected by an intermediary from the person who bears the ultimate economic burden of the tax. Ang indirect tax ay isang buwis na nakolekta ng isang taga pamagitan mula sa taong nagdadala ng pinakahuling pasaning pang ekonomiya ng buwis. What is direct tax? Direct taxes is a tax of an individual or organization pays directly to the imposing entity. It is a tax payer. For example, pays direct taxes to the government for different purposes, including real property tax, personal property tax, income tax, or taxes on assets. Quick Review Ang epekto ng digmaan sa ekonomiya ng Pilipinas ay mabisa kung saan nagkaroon ng problema sa usaping pang-ekonomiya noong 1949. Nagkaroon ng matinding kawalan ng pondo sa iba't ibang aspeto ng uh, pamahalaan tulad ng sektor ng military at ng edukasyon. Samantalang pinayuhan ng Estados Unidos ang Pilipinas na amponin or iadap ang indirect taxation ngunit tinanggihan nito ng administrasyong Manuel Rojas dahil ayaw nitong ihiwalay ang uh, kaalyado sa Kongreso. Dumating ang paglago ng ekonomiya noong panahon ni President Elpidio Quirino sa pamamagitan ng pagpapatupad ng import and exchange control na humantong sa pagpapaunlad ng substitution. At ang patakarang ito ay pinayagan na mas palawakin at paunlarin ang ekonomiya ng bansa. Habang ang sumunod na mga pangulo na sina Magsaysay, Garcia at Makapagal ay nangako na pag-aralan ang struktura ng buwis at, ng, at ang patakaran ng uh, buwis sa pamamagitan ng paglikha ng komisyon noong 1959 sa pamamagitan ng Republic Act 2211. Pagkatapos ng digmaan ay tumaas rin ang kaso ng korupsyon kung saan karamihan sa pondo ng publiko ay nawala sa katiwalian na nag-iwan sa gobyerno ng kawalan ng pagpopondo ng proyekto na nakatoon sa kaunlaran. Sa ilalim ng otoridad ni Marcos, ni President Marcos, ang sistema ng buwis ay nananatiling regresibo. Sa pamumuno ni President Corazon Aquino, binago niya ang sistema ng buwis sa pamamagitan ng Tax Reform Program noong 1986. Ang layunin nito ay upang mas mapabuti ang kakayahang tumugon ng sistema at itaguyod ang pagkakapantay-pantay at pagtugon sa paglago ng ekonomiya ng bansa. So, pasensyo na mga kaklase dahil you know, sinisipon tayo ngayon. Ay, ako lang pala to. Walang tayo. Sana may natutunan kayo sa aking presentation and salamat sa pakikinig. God bless and thank you.
Along with tax reform came the administrative reforms such as first, restructuring of the Depart Department of Finance and its attached agency. Second, the Bureau of Internal Revenue or BIR through the Executive Order 127. Dahil sa tax reform prog program na ito ng Aquino Administration, tumaas ang tax and revenue ng ating bansa mula sa 10.7% noong 1985 ay nag umabot ito ng 15.4% noong 1992. Sa makatuwid, sa loob ng 7 taon, tumaas ito ng 4.7%. Matapos ang panunungkulan ni President Aquino, nagkaroon ng pagbabago, reformang pagbabago sa panunungkulan ni President Ramos. Dahil sa kanyang comprehensive tax reform program, napapaloob sa comprehensive tax reform, reform program ang mga sumusunod. Una, system broad base mas malawak simple mas madaling maintindihan and with reasonable tax rate mas makakaroon pagpapataw ng bills pangalawa minimize tax avoidance allowed by existing flaws and loopholes in the system Pangatlo, encourage payments by increasing tax exemptions levels, lowering the highest tax rate, and simplifying procedures. Noong January 1, 2018, nagkaroon ng tax exemptions sa mga Una, compensation income earners, self-employed, professional taxpayers na kung saan ang mga nabanggit ay may annual income na less than 250000 They are exempted from pit or personal income tax. Number four, rationalize the grant of tax incentives which was estimated to be worth 531.7 billion pesos in 1994. Sa usapin ng tax incentives, binago ng mga mambabatas ang corporate tax system. Mula sa corporate tax system, ito ay naging CITIRA or Corporate Income Tax and Incentives Rationalization Act. Layunin nito na mabawasan ang income tax mula sa 30% ay magiging 20% sa loob ng 10 taon. Once again, good day to each and everyone. The value-added tax of President Aquino has the following features. In the first feature, there is a uniform rate of 10% on sale of domestic and imported goods and services. Ibig sabihin, may 10% buwis na ipapataw para sa mga kalakaran within the Philippines, pati yung mga imported na goods and services or yung mga produkto. 0% on exports and foreign currency denominated sales. When we say exports, yan na yung mga produkto na inaangkat natin sa labas ng bansa. And when we speak of foreign currency denominated, this means the sale to a non-resident of goods. Feature 10% in lieu of varied rates applicable to fixed taxes. The examples of fixed taxes are the head tax or cedula and the sin tax. When we refer to sin tax, uh, it, it pertains to alcohol, tobacco, drugs, soft, soft drinks, and gambling. 10% tax will also be applied to the following. Advanced sales tax, tax 
an original sale, subsequent sales tax, compensating tax, miller's tax, contractor's tax, broker's tax, film lesser and distributor's tax, excess tax on solvents and matches, and excess tax on processed videotapes. In the third pH sure, we have 2% tax on entities with annual sales of receipts of less than 5,200,000. Ibig sabihin, may dalawang porsyentong buwis na ipapataw para sa mga kumikita sa untaon ng mahigit sa 5 million. In the fourth pH sure, adoption of tax credit method of calculating tax by subtracting tax on inputs from tax on gross sales. When we talk about inputs, yan ay yung, it refers to the capital, and the gross, it refers to the profit. Sa panglimang feature, exempted po sa VAT ang mga basic commodities gaya ng agrikultura, mga palay, or yung mga inaani natin, marine food products, yung mga isda, and in their original state, price, and regulated petroleum products and fertilizers. Kasali, kasali rin po yung, sa exemption ang mga fertilizers. In the last feature, there is additional 20% tax on non-essential articles such as jewelry, perfumes, toilet waters, yacht, and other vessels for pleasures and sports. So, yung mga binibiling mga alahas, meron po yung buwis na 20%, pati yung mga perfumes and other mentioned non-essential articles. Good day everyone, my name is Rose Anbacanto and I'm going to discuss our topic about VAT. Ano nga ba ang VAT? Ang VAT means Value Added Tax. So, pag-uusapan po natin ang mga exempted sa VAT. So, ito po sila. Importation of meat, sale or importation of coal and natural gas in whatever form of states, um, educational services rendered by private educational institution, duly accredited by the Commission on a High Education, CHED, House and lot and other residential dwellings value at 51 million and below, um, subject to adjustment and the consumer price index. Number four, lesson of residential units with monthly rental per unit of not more than 55,000, subject to adjustment using CPI. So, market nga ba uh, exempted uh, sa VAT ang meat? So, as we are aware, certain tax exemption have been approved by the law of some product of basic comedies on the top of the exemption on a primary agricultural and products section 109 and of the National Internal Revenue Code as amended state that livestock and poultry feeds in the Philippines are accepted from the value added tax. And what is the VAT means nga value added tax right ay isang uri ng buwis o pinapataw o kinokolekta sa tuwing tayo ay magkukonsumo ng mga produkto. Ito ay kadalasan na pinapatong sa ilang mga pangangailangan tulad ng mga proceed food at mga kagamitan sa bahay at iba pa. So ito namang sumusunod ay mga napabuti o improvement ng value added tax. Ito ay ang mga exemption for all the cooperatives sa mga agricultural at electrical condition na ang mga bahagi ng kapital ng bawat membro ay hindi lalagpas ng mahigit 515,000 pesos. And also, ano nga ba ang CPI or Tinatawag itong Consumer Price Index, ito ay kariniwang ginagamit sa mga pagsusukat ng implementation at kapag ito ay nasukat na ay mapapag-aralan din ang pagbabago ng presyo ng mga produkto. So noong all, and also in February 2006, some of the elected professional are being taxed. Um, value added tax was also been increased from 10% to 12%. And Mr. President Benigno Aquino, also succeed President Gloria Arroyo in 2010. 
President Aquino promised that no new tax would be imposed and additional revenue would have to come from adjusting existing taxes. The administration working into adjusting of excess tax on liquor and cigarettes or the sin tax reform. So ang admis, administration ay nakikipagsapalaran sa, sa pag-aayos ng excess tax is a legislated tax on a specific good and services purchased such as fuel, tobacco, and alcohol. Excess tax, one in international taxes imposed within government infrastructure rather than international taxes imposed across country borders and federal excess tax is usually collected from motor fuels sale, um, airlines ticket, tobacco, and other goods and services. And the administration of President Rodrigo Duterte also promised tax reform, particularly in the in income taxes as, if, as it vo vote, vowed to lower income tax rates shouldered by 14 Filipinos, the present income tax shame of the country is the second highest in Southeast Asia and the current law on the income taxes were outdated. On the petroleum products and automobile, it is hoped that reforms in the country tax policy will be felt even in the lowest classes in society. That's all. So, dito na lang po magtatapos ang aming presentation. Yes, from presentation from group 19 or 5.3 tungkol sa fiscal policy present to na, from 1946 to present ang bobo ko, no? Kasama ko si na Noraida at saka si Rose Ann Bucante. So, hope you like it guys and God bless. Thank you. Bye.